Hi there, my name is Aaron Short. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today is Friday, October the 8th, and it's even earlier than yesterday. It's noon here in New York City. Let me know what the time is where you're watching from. And I'm guessing where our guest is, it's even earlier. Let's bring him on without any further ado. Brandon, how you doing, buddy? Hey, I'm doing well. Uh, 9 a.m., so it's just prime, <laughs> co prime coffee time for me. <laughs> Let me join you with a sip of tea from my Sandhole Sniffer mug, TM. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Mm. And congratulations on a, another product release. You're working Thanks, hard, man. aren't you? Working hard. Very, very busy. Yeah, very, very busy. Um, you know, it, it's definitely a testament to our incredible team, you know, to be able to run two major uh, projects like this at one time. Um, and without saying any more, you know, this is, certainly isn't the last thing we're doing. You know, this is going to be a banner project. Uh, 24 month period for JBL. So we're really excited about all the products that we're, we're not just releasing, but uh, developing over time and, and really, you know, maintaining our focus on putting out the best products we can for our customers. That's really exciting. And lately, I've been hearing about a lot of products being um, either delayed or not even shipped because of the, the, the things that are going on right now. So I'm, I'm super impressed that you've released these new products during the during this time. Very, very impressive. Yeah, the market for really everything right now is challenged from supply chains, but it's not just supply chains, it's logistics. Uh, you know, being that I live in Southern California and I just went out to Catalina, maybe just before the PRX1 launched, uh, you drive out into, or you don't drive it, you're on a boat, but you ride out into the bay and there's 20, 30 massive container ships just sitting in the bay and they can't get them out. And so... It's really a challenge from a supply chain's perspective, and it's not just on on gear on our side. You know, it's washing machines and cars, and you name it. It's just tough right now from a supply chain standpoint. So to to be able to release quantities, even even in limited quantities, you know, we've already we've already shipped about three thousand units worldwide of the PRX one. Um, so just to be able to get anything out for people to experience is is huge right now. It's it's just a tough climate to be able to build anything. Yeah, I was looking at a brand, another brand this week, and they're not shipping or selling anything right now. It's kind of crazy, really, really. One of crazy. Our, well, yeah, there, there's some of. I mean, you know, I I can't really ship a lot of my products right now, too. You know, my entire Eon 600 line is back ordered. I even up to my professional grade SRX stuff. There's back order everywhere. It's just a challenge um, logistically. There's nothing that we can really do. There's container shortages. There's truck driver shortages. There's train car shortages. There's parts shortages. I mean, you name it, and it's imp impacting everyone. And mm -hmm. you know, in, 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 in a worldwide situation too. And then now you've got power outages in China, which are going to then impact supply chains down the down the line. It, it's crazy in this worldwide economy how one or two things can just really spiral <clears throat> the entire the entire chain. You know. Yeah, yeah. So again, impressive you launched it. So you launched and announced this on Tuesday. Is this yeah, currently did. actually in? Because I remember when the PRX one was released, it was in a few weeks until, say, Sweetwater got them. Are these at Sweetwater yet, or when, when will they be received? They're, they're on their way to everybody right now. Um, okay. We've got we've got probably uh, two or three containers going out right now. So they're going to be in limited quantity until about mid next month. Um, but we we're you know, we're working on it as fast as we can, you know, right now, one of the shortages we're facing is a lithium shortage from a raw material mm -hmm. standpoint to be able to build batteries. You know, it's just, it's, uh, it's one thing after another from a shortage perspective, but we're, you know, we're driving forward. We're going to have quantity, uh, they should be hitting this week. They started shipping last week when I, when I looked, so we should have some quantity for people to get out and experience and, uh, you know start to, to play with, you know, here in the next few days, I would think. Okay. And and they are available for pre order. I see they're on the Sweetwater website. So I'll put a link to I that think every, in yeah. the chat. Yeah. I think everybody's got them in pre order. We're going to be in all stores for Guitar Center. Um so you know it it's it should be a pretty popular launch from a uh retailer perspective. And then I know you have some worldwide fans, um, you know, I know Sound Tech and, and Tomon and a lot of the other worldwide partners have bought in on this pretty heavily as well. So Good. generally speaking, just keep looking, just keep looking at your, your dealers' websites and understand that we as manufacturers want to make product and we're doing everything oh, we man. can to, to try <laughs> to get it into people's hands. 
Uh, it's just there's challenges. I mean, there's only so much you can do. Yeah. Yeah, I have links now with uh, Sweetwater and Toman. So when when I see them on there, I'll be posting them on the on the page on the on the on the community, community <laughs> section of the of the videos. All right. So before we get into this, I'll just say hi to David Belcher. Thanks for being here, David. Bemo can't stay, but will watch the replay. That's important to remember that if you can't watch these live streams, you can always watch the replay. Our last our last one we did um, when the PRX one came out has over a thousand views now, Brandon. So that was really cool. Yeah, and I tend to go back and look at them and see if there's any outstanding questions. So, I noticed that. Uh, I, I appreciate I, that. I, I, yeah, I want to make sure that that you guys out there all have uh, answers to your questions. Um, you know, my my time does does kind of get limited at certain points in time. This this has been a good last ten days for me because uh, my engineering, some of my engineering and acoustic teams in China have been out on Golden Week holiday. Um, you know, some of so whenever I can spare the time to jump into YouTube and and uh, try to address some comments. I, I, I surely take that time because I think that engaging with, uh, you know, the, the end user is, is some of the most important stuff you guys, believe it or not, are the best product developers that exist. The people that mm -hmm. use the product and can say, this is what I wanted to do. Um, you know, without that level of feedback, we couldn't develop products that people want to buy. You know, you, you really got to pay attention to what, what the pulse of the, of the people says, you know, yeah, I was discussing that. I was had uh, Peter Simmer on yesterday, and we were discussing that. But their their ch new tuner was supposed to come out in say March, and it got delayed until now. And he was saying that it was good. They had time to go in and and work on the firmware. They weren't like rushing the thing out. They had time to do that and get more beta feedback and things like that. And I was saying this as a as a person that likes music gear, I'm seeing a lot now. Like firmware is great, and and is it can be great, and it can be bad. Because some products, like there's some guitar processors that have been released lately that are just missing features that were promised at launch. But then there's other things that can be added from customer feedback, which you couldn't do in the in the 80s, right? In the 80s, what you bought is what you bought. So yeah. this is it's this kind of thing. But I see you've, you've just updated a software release for these um, the PRX1 and the new uh, speaker. So we'll talk about that in a second as well. Let me just finish saying hi to everybody. Rosanna is here and she's moderating. Thank you, Rosanna. Marco is here. Oh, Macedonia. Great. Six o'clock. Very cool. Mark is here. Patsy Smith is here. Says hi from England. Mark says there's shortages on shortages. That's, yeah, you're tr that's true. Yeah. Um, Bernard Smith's here. It's five o'clock in the UK. Hi to everyone in the chat. And the Tone Shack says, yo. Yo back, to, yo back at your Tone Shack. <laughs> All right. So. Um, JB, JBL Eon 1 Mark 2. So there was an Eon 1 Mark 1. So what uh, have you changed? Not, not traditionally, no? right? It was, you know, we had an Eon 1 and an Eon 1 Pro. Mm. Um, they were both column style PAs, right? But the, there was, there was very, it was very hard to tell the difference between the two products. One of them had a battery. One of them had a larger woofer. Um, one of them had an extra channel. It's they're, they're, they stepped on each other to a degree. Mm -hmm. And so when we were designing the Eon 1 Mark II, what we did was we took all of the best features that people loved from the Eon 1 and the Eon 1 Pro, things like the one hand carry, the ability to put it all into one package, um, and things like that. We took all the features people loved and then carried them over. And then on the other side, we took all the features that people had expressed doubt in or displeasure and we fixed them, you know, like our, our gain structure, we addressed that by putting full microphone, you know, mixing desk grade preamps into the unit and, uh, you know, some of the battery performance stuff we addressed and, and things like that. So traditionally I've, I've had a lot of people who are like, well, why don't you call this the EL one pro Mark II? And I mean, first off, that's a mouthful. Um, and second off, you know, the main thing here was that we wanted to build two fundamentally similar but very different products in the Eon 1 Mark II and the PRX1. We really wanted to have that step to make it very clear um, what differences you're getting between products so that you guys as customers can really make educated decisions about buying the right product for your solution. Uh, instead of buying something that just might not fit uh, what you're trying to accomplish. 
Yeah, I never used the original Eon 1 or the Eon 1 Pro, but I often read about people saying the gain, there wasn't enough gain or something for acoustic guitars. So I, I, I would read that, and, and that's not the case with this. My, my other question to you then is, why didn't you go with a whole new name? Why did you call it the Mark II if it is so different? Well, from our perspective, the Eon 1 uh, and Eon 1 Pro are both award-winning products, tremendously popular. And even if you look at all three of these products together, you can see the commonality between them at the, at the very least that they belong. Um, and really, Eon is a brand for JB, a sub-brand for JBL that, you know, has in its existence has sold over 1 million speakers. Uh, you know, it's, it's just a, it's a name that we have driven forward with as as you know kind of our champion uh cost effective mid you know mid price point products um and this one still fits in that mold it still fits with the the family and so from our perspective we didn't really want to reinvent the wheel because it is a different product but i think that sometimes when you release a mark ii you know it's it just means hey it's better you know look at like iron man we had all those mark suits and and everyone every single one was just better it's not that it was a different suit it was just a better suit and so that's kind of what we've done with the eomo mark ii it's not that yeah. it's a different product it's just a better product yeah um so okay so give me the elevator pitch then what is this product who is it for and what does it do so really the Elmo Mark II is a medium format, battery powered, all in one PA. And really that's what it is. And for, for users, it's for anybody who wants uh, great sound, easy setup, and a ton of DSP packed into one streamlined package that they can run on and or off battery. That's really the, the, the key. Um, so for cust from a customer perspective, this is gonna be great for buskers and uh, performers who do a lot of gigs where they don't have access to AC power. Um, but also this is going to be great for people who, um, might not have high, high level audio knowledge and just want something that's going to going to do the job and in, in a very simple fashion. Um, you know, I, maybe you're just doing some music playback for an event and speaking into a microphone and you, you don't want to have a complicated setup with a mixer and poles and, uh, full range speakers and all the cabling that's associated and all we really wanted to just make it a, a product that was simple but also defined and you know can can appeal to both the entry level knowledge user as well as the high level knowledge user the people who've been using all this stuff for their for their whole careers and just that was really the goal here on this product um and the, the obviously the off power focus was was huge um, that was one of the biggest features that people loved about the eon one pro um, and we really took a lot of the feedback on the battery performance and how that worked and, and integrated it into this product. So I feel like I should show it on the screen for any viewers that have tuned in and haven't seen my initial impressions video yet. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to share the screen just so we can, uh, you know, show some uh, some pictures of it. And then that might help us when we're explaining what it is as well. But yeah, the battery power is great. You know, the the thing is the the compact is great because that can do a lot of venues and it's battery powered. But this just gives you even more. I mean, I've done some gigs occasionally, like on the beach, and they've wanted you know when you're outside like that and you and you want loads of volume. I mean, I feel like the compact could probably do it, but with something like this, you just got that extra headroom, haven't you? That extra it, power. It, it, it's it's not just headroom; it's the throw, right? You, you, mm. When you think about com compact as an eight inch woofer with a one inch dome tweeter. Um, so it's a two-way system in theory. And when, you, when you're when you looking at the Eon 1 Mark II, you have a 10-inch woofer, which is automatically going to give you a better bass response. And then on the other side, you have eight uh, two-inch tweeters as opposed to just the one-inch dome tweeters. So the, the Eon 1 Mark II is going to give you much more headroom. I mean, on battery, you're talking 7 dB, which is a very pronounced difference. Um, and really it's going to give you a lot better throw so on a beach or something like that where you're contending with uh an unstable environment in the elements you know with wind blowing and all that that stuff it, it the eon mark ii is just going to give you a lot better by way of throw yeah and then from a dsp perspective um you know eon compact is so small it, it's hard to pack all that functionality into that little amount of real estate um, and this one just gave us a little bit more amount of real estate to be able to put in that LCD screen, uh, and, and then really tap into the ability to get all the DSP that you can get, um, 
from a you know from a all-in-one speaker and just packed it into that lcd so yeah. Th th those are really your key differences. You're going to get a lot, lot better throw out of this product. You're going to get a lot better frequency response. The horizontal dispersion on this product is better. Um, you know, just, just things of that nature. Now, obviously the young one compact is 17 pounds and this one is most certainly not 17 pounds. So, yeah. you know, it, again, it comes down to what's your application. You know, if you've, yeah. if you've got to carry, a lot of gear or you're 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 doing a beach thing um you might not want to carry 40 pounds across the sand you know you might only want to carry that 17 pounds and a, and a speaker stand so you know, it really becomes application uh and function the thing the thing is um the gigs here are slowly reopening and if i have to take the subway right all i can take is an acoustic guitar on my back i have a mic stand on like a sling across my back a bag of cables which weighs about 20 pounds i mean a bag of cables and pedals is heavy and then yeah. i could take the compact in my other hand that's not fun but i can do it and i've been you know making a living doing that the last few weeks it's good something like this i wouldn't this is about this is just over 40 pounds i wouldn't it's about really 42 pounds. yeah i wouldn't really so i'm surprised on my video because some people were saying it Oh, I'm gonna uh, replace my um, compact with this. To me, this is more of a mid middle product. It's a different product, and I mean, I, just I would tend to agree with you. Like, if you were playing yeah. a you know a pub uh, yeah. or something like that on a Thursday night, the compact is probably going to be your go-to, especially in your area where not everybody has cars and public transportation is actually readily available and and mm -hmm. readily embraced. You know, the compact is probably going to be an ideal solution for you. Yeah. You know, it, well, in my area, we don't have public transportation that's as effective. <laughs> so, you know, you might take something a little bigger, but, I, you know, it, it's really just a matter of, of, of your application, I think, and how yeah. you want to get how you want to get from point A to point B. Um, and, and in me, your situation, yeah. But I, I, but I would I would rather take that's what I say. I'd rather take this. But the fact, the great thing about the compact is you can take public transport where you couldn't before and you could make money, right? You can do the job. I'd rather take this one, but you know, I'm just saying this, if this is what I would take if I was taking the car and wanted the battery power. If I'm taking the car and don't need battery power, I would take PRX1 because then you've got even more, more sound, right? So yeah. I, I just think you've got to choose the one for the application. One viewer did say he might get all three which I know is an, it's, it's an investment, but then you've got ultimate flexibility and you could even use them together, right? You could use the compact with this and have a really cool mobile. Yeah, yeah you, cer you certainly can. Uh, and just from a design perspective, the goal is to integrate the Eon One Compact into the JBL Pro Connect app. So then you can really use them all together. Yeah. Um, there's nothing, the only thing stopping us and on that perspective is just resources. So yeah. long term, you could use them all together. They get along together. Uh, the Eon One Mark II and the PRX One, which you'll know uh, since you've used them, the workflow and commonality between them is nearly identical. Yeah. You don't have to. So if you own one, you don't have to relearn how to use the second. It's you're gonna you're gonna feel like you're already at home, uh, you know, with just a few things different. Uh, yeah. So that's that's really a key uh, for us. I think that is is yeah. really designing a a commonality between our products so that they look and feel the same, but really for you guys as end users n to not have to relearn something new every single time. It, yeah. It, it, yeah. That's huge from, especially oh, from yeah. my perspective. Definitely. I just went through that with my guitar stuff, you know, like for a while, like for the channel, like I kind of justified it for the channel. I was, I owned all the different guitar modelers. And then one day I just sat there and just, I just got burnt out having to keep rethinking, the workflow of every device and I just got rid of them. I'm like I can't do this anymore either. So the fact you've made all these the same is really, really smart. We, we mentioned that before, it's really clever. But let me tell you some things that I, I've used them both now. And I do, I like the PRX one, as you know, and I, I, the Compact I've always been a huge fan of, but there's some things I really like about this that I wanna point out. First of all, the first thing I noticed is this. With the PRX one, you have the stands in a separate bag. In here, everything is in one, and there's even like a little lock at the back, so it holds them in place. So this this thing, we said it's forty two pounds, but everything is there. You don't need to then take a, like a like a stand or the poles separately. I think that's really nice. I think a lot of people will find that really useful. Yeah, no, and the the good thing is is even if you still had to carry a, your guitar on your back and a, and cables in another hand with PRX one, you have two things, to, two distinct things to carry. You have a woofer yeah. and you have your arrays. Yeah. But with the Elmer Mark II, packing it all up in one, even if it might be a little heavy, 
um, for one hand, you most certainly can carry it in one hand and having everything in that self-contained package just kind of makes it a, a, a gigging speaker, you know, something yeah. that you, especially for solo artists, DJs, people who have to carry uh, gear to be sufficient, you know? Yeah. I think I read the original Eon one also had a compartment for cables and stuff as well, right? This one doesn't have that, but it, but like I said, the fact that it's all in one is great. And I, I don't like carrying stands around, so that, that gets rid of that problem for me, which is really yeah. nice. And, and we really simplified the, the process here on like Eon one and Eon one pro, um, the mechanism to lock these into place was a bit more complicated on uh, this one. It's all injection molded plastic with that okay. very easy locking system. And you could knock this thing over and those are not falling out. They're very secure. In yeah, there. yeah, they are. Uh, the way they lock in is very smart. You just press the button at the back. Sometimes I forget to unlock it and wonder why they're not coming out. So don't forget. I've to do built, that. I, <laughs> I built, I built the thing and I've done that myself. Yeah, so yeah. Don't, don't feel bad. And this is them taken out. One of those, so I learned this from you recently, which is really cool. One of these is the actual battery. And then you can buy another one and a, and a separate accessory, which is a charger. And then if you're like a busker, you can always have one charged up. So the battery yeah, is in correct. one of those one of those plastic pieces, right? It's really cool. Yes, that's correct. And we've done that. We did that deliberately for a few reasons. The, the first and foremost reason was we wanted more acoustic volume in the woofer cabinet. And oh, right. that's how you get that's how you get your best bass response. A lot of people are going to say, hey, plastic and bass response doesn't go hand in hand. And, and to a degree, there is truth to that. Wood certainly performs better than plastic in a woofer cabinet. But if we're able to um, free up about a full liter, a uh, cubic liter of volume in the speaker by removing the battery, that gives us just much better low frequency response. And the main thing that I noticed about this product versus the Eon one and the Eon one pro is that low frequency response. Just, it, it's not muddy. It hits and you know, it, it has a lot of the thump that you want on the low end, but also mm -hmm. some punch. So if you're, if you have a kick drum or you're playing backing tracks where you have drums and things like that, the drums will actually stand out instead of just sounding like a muddy mess. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. One viewer did say it's 10 inch and not 12 inch like PRX one. That's worth noting. As an acoustic yep. guitarist, I think I actually prefer the 10 inch myself. But as a, as a DJ or a bass player might want the PRX one for that larger woofer. But again, yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's application dependent, right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, and if you want that lower frequency or that lower, the, the larger woofer, you know, obviously when you're looking at the two products, you could say, okay, Eon one has a 10, PRX one has a 12, you know, that's yeah. A very yeah. easy difference for you to be able to spot uh, yeah. without having to do a plethora of research about the differences between the products. You know, you can very yeah. quickly say, okay, this is the differences and make your decision from there. And there's there's less speakers, obviously, but something someone wanted on PRX1 was the ability to just plug in the, the speakers so that the whole thing is shorter. So just one of the pieces. I've noticed with this one, you can do that. So some people might appreciate that as well. You can just have... Yeah. You can leave out that that spacer and just have basically the battery um, column and then the speakers and the whole thing is lower. You know, I once did a, a kid's birthday party and I was thinking that would be useful at something like that because with the with with the other one, sometimes the speakers are very high up. So with this one, you can make the whole thing smaller and the speakers are lower down to the ground. So I think some people will like that too. Also works great in a restaurant setting or if you're playing yeah. something like that where people where their ear levels are are sitting. You, yeah. you don't need the array to be six foot tall. So, yeah. um, and you know, it, it's interswappable in regards to which column you can put there. You can put the battery and then use battery power, but if you don't need battery power, you don't have to put the battery in. You can just put one of the regular spacers. It'll still pass audio. With the right. Machine. And it's worth mentioning as well that when you use the, the mains power, you get more volume, right? I want to point that yeah, out. Yeah, we've designed a, a power amp that actually we're calling VPP or uh, variable power performance. So basically, if you have access to AC power, uh, the power, power amp will automatically notice that you have AC power and it will optimize your uh, power amp system to give you about 4 dB more headroom. So, you know, it's not a huge groundbreaking amount of headroom, but 4 dB is 4 dB. Um, oh. And if you need a little bit extra power and you don't need the, the portability of the battery, then you you as an end user don't need to do anything. You just plug right. in and the system optimizes itself. I, I always plug in when I can anyway to simply to, to charge the battery. So if there's power sitting there, just plug it in. And then if you haven't got power, you don't need to. You know, I, I some some weddings, 
I think these things are so great for because you know some some gigs is some gigs the music is kind of a set an afterthought and the visuals are really important. I played the I played the thing a few years ago here at a jewelry store and I set up like a conventional uh, speaker on a stand with the cables running obviously. And I remember the the uh, the manager of the store came over. I can't have this speaker here. Can you can you hide it behind the curtain? I said, well, I can, but it won't sound very good. So I put it behind, so I put it behind the curtain. Oh, I can't have the cables there. Can you get rid of the cable? I said, well, <laughs> I need to plug in my guitar. <laughs> so it got to the point where I should have just probably got up and left. But I was thinking with something like this, it'd be great because if you want a clean stage or a clean area, a wedding, you can just have this and then even use like a what? Like I use the um, some of the wireless stuff. I've got a wireless guitar, wireless mic, the little bugs. So if you use that and this, there'd be no cables anywhere and it'd be really clean. And I think for some people that would be worth it even just for that. Sometimes the visual look of this of the stage is really important for certain gigs. Yeah. So. And in addition to that, being able to use the wireless systems, you can leverage the USB ports to actually yeah. power the wireless systems. Yeah. Um, so you won't even you all you'll need to run is just the one IEC cable to the wall, or if you don't need, want to run to the wall, then you don't have to. You can actually power your wireless system off of your battery uh, using yep. those USB ports and really yep. just have a self-contained system yep. um, that doesn't have any cables, if, if, yep. that, if that's the way that you choose to run. Now, of course, remember that anytime you're using those USB ports to draw power, it will decrease the battery's performance, but not drastically from my experience, certainly not enough to be prohibitive in regards to gigging. Ah, so you're, I'm using those to power my TC Helicon pedals, but you're using those to power a wireless system. Yeah, I, yeah. I meant I have the wireless system that's just two bugs, and you charge them up at home, and then at the gig you plug them in, one for the mic, one for the guitar. The whole thing is completely wireless, and that can, yeah. that's, that can be a really nice thing. Also, you know what? I'm just thinking of real-world examples. I played a few weeks ago for like an outside kids' camp, and they said, okay, set up here. And I used, I did use Compact, and I also used like a, a regular QSC speaker. And I wired them up, and I took up lots of space because I thought I had that whole space to myself. And then I realized that behind me was the um, the small stand. And because the kids were going from stand to stand, and when they came to the small stand, they were just running over and over my wires. And uh, I can't believe, I was so stressed, I can't believe no one tripped over a cable. They kept like tripping over the cable, tripping over the cable. So again, something like this would be great for that environment. You don't have to really have any cables running, and I, I, I yeah. just think I, I just think that there's some practical uses there that I can I can see that maybe people haven't haven't even thought of yet. And I've actually seen this being used by um, a yoga instructor. Yeah, put put one on a beach and ran a lapel wireless system paired yeah. Bluetooth audio. Yeah. Um, set up ducking. And then next thing you know, she's got backing tracks. And when she wants to talk to her, her people, she's running right out of the USB port for her power into the microphone input. And she's very easily able to just have a beach yoga session yeah. where she doesn't have to yell at people. She yeah. doesn't have to continually turn up or down her music. It just makes it a nice all in one solution uh, yeah. for somebody who really wants something portable like that. Yeah. It'll be. I, I'm sure you'll hear of more and more situations like that where people are using it, and it'll be absolutely ideal for that. Or even like a school or something where they've got to quickly carry something to another room and play some music. I mean, there's other things like when you when you when you show up to a wedding and everyone's kind of looking, or you feel like everyone's looking at you, and you can just throw the thing down, turn it on, uh, turn on your phone, and play a piece of music immediately. I mean, you you could technically play the music as you as you're walking in the venue, couldn't you? Yeah. That's like it, it removes that layer of like opening your bag and taking out the cables and plugging the thing in and connecting your phone and then powering it up. You can just where everybody's it, looking at you stuff. setting up and you feel yeah. like you're on stage before you're even on stage. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, nobody likes that. Yeah, but I've seen you know it, the fun. One of the funnest things for me in product development is being able to release a product into the wild, so to say. And then just see how you uh, end users mm. figure out what you want to do with it. You know, one of the coolest things that I've seen is uh, there's a guy that, had, had, you know, was running an Eon One Compact um, with his tablet plugged into the power output uh, and using it as a karaoke machine for his backyard. Mm. And I was like, I would never have, I mean, we designed a tablet stand on the Eon One Compact, but I would never yeah. have, have thought to 
to test that or use it in that fashion. So it's just really cool seeing people take things and say, I wonder if it can do this and lo and behold it can. And then, you know, it's just, it's way more fun when, when you you see people uh, use something in a fashion that you never really foresaw it being used. That's why I gave you those examples. Like there's these things that pop up that you didn't even think about. And then you think, Oh, that's cool. That's, that's a cool thing. Like, Oh, I've got to take a stand. Oh, I can just play music immediately. And sometimes these things are are just really nice, you know, um, just jump over and say, hi, Marianne is here. Thanks for being here, Marianne. Mike Hunt is here. Thank you for the live. You're welcome. Uh, Peter Gregg is here. He's a photographer and a singer. I never knew Eon was part of JBL. That is interesting information. Yeah, believe it or not, a little a fun tidbit. Uh, Eon, JBL Eon was actually the first ever powered loudspeaker designed mm-hmm. in the early 90s. So, you know, the, the whole reason powered loudspeakers exist is because of the, the Eon line. And, um, you know, like I said, o- over 1 million sold in its lifetime. So it's a, it, obviously um, incredibly popular. Let me just address this. Lewis says, I wonder if this is better than the Bose version. They, they, as far as I know, there isn't a battery powered Bose. Like, that's why this is quite unique. I, I haven't seen many of these kind of systems that are battery powered like this. And I think that's... Yeah, there's, only, there's only a few on the market. Um, yeah. And, you know, it, better is one of those words that's subjective. You know, um, I have objective ways to quantify things that are, that are better, but really it's going to come down to your preference. You know, I I could show you frequency response charts till you're blue in the face, (laughs) but if you, if you like the sound of one better than the other, then I'm not going to change your mind, no matter how much objective data I have to, to show. So whether something is better or not really just falls on, on preference. And from my perspective, um, I've, I would say I've designed a much more comprehensive product, something that has much more by way of features. Um, Mm -hmm. Now, some people would say that's a a con, you know, there's so much in the product that it can be hard to ramp up and learn. And sometimes it's, it's much easier if that's what you need to just plug into something and say, I'm done. And if that's what you want, we offer that experience on our product as well. Mm -hmm. But I like to take the, the, I'm going to, I'm going to give you the keys to the car. If you only Mm want to use 20% of the features, Who am I to tell you, you can only use 20% of the features. Yeah, it's interesting, actually, often at a gig, I will just plug in my pedal and just play. I don't, it's, you know, sometimes at home, I'll be dialing things in, but then, but then again, sometimes that USB power has been a lifesaver. Like I've, I've needed that to power something up. So, and actually there was, (laughs) there was a gig a few, a few months ago, I was outside that country club and I forgot to take the power cable to my, uh, to my PA. So that, that may not have been a problem with this because it might have been charged up, right? So there's there's a lot of features there that, ha- that are extremely useful and the people need to decide what they want. But my point was, just to be clear, this is a unique product, this one, because this can be battery powered. What's that, was it eight, eight hours on battery-ish? Uh, it's about six hour playtime. Six um, hours? I've, I, like that's what we rated as just based on what the math says. To be mm. plainly honest with you, uh, I ran this at basically full tilt in a backyard party for eight hours and maybe Mm. only degraded about 50% of my signal. Now, obviously I was only running Bluetooth audio. Uh, If you're running more sources, um, you're going to degrade more power. You know, if you're using the mixer wide open, running everything, then it's probably going to be closer to that six hour play time. Mm. Um, But really just becomes, you know, what do you need and how do you need it? And if you need yeah. more battery, you know, we have a dual battery charger, we have a replacement battery. It's not a hot swappable battery, but um, you know, it's easy to say, Hey guys, hold on a second. I just got to change out my battery. Okay. But you guys, just, I'm back. I could just buy another, the part, right. And just have it charged up and take it with me. And I just literally switch that over in the break yep. or something. That's, yeah. That's, that's, yeah. They that's, won't run, they won't run in series, but you could actually stack them on top of each other and not bring the empty spacer. Oh, that's cool. And so you could just stack it all in. Now, they right. won't run in series. Like this, so right. there's no, there's no benefit to you as the right. user with the exception of the fact that you just don't have to carry the extra gear. That's one less so piece though. Yeah. yeah, exactly. You just switch them around. Okay. I like that. 
I mean, for me, honestly, that that's enough. I mean, six hours is enough. I always say, as long as I can get a, a good four hours, I'm usually fine. I mean, four, yeah. five, five hours is, is, but yeah, six hours for me is fine. But it's good that you've got that additional one. I'm sure there's people watching that busk all day and want the ability to run all day. So it's good that you've got that as well. Or people who might have a uh, afternoon gig and a night gig. You know, you, you yeah. might not have access to power to be able to charge in between. Um, so being able to have that is great, you know. Yeah, yeah, very cool. All right, but my point really was this is quite unique. I haven't seen many products with this kind of power and this feature set that can be run from battery. And I think that's that's the unique um, selling point of this for me. Yeah, I, I would certainly agree. Um, and, and really the versatility is where, where it comes down to. You might not need all the effects. You might not need automatic feedback suppression. You might not need the USB, um, but if you do need it, it's there. Uh, yeah. And that is one thing that a lot of other competitors in the space can't say. Yeah, you know, they do. We're pretty much the only ones that are trying to give you as an end user at power access from the USB ports. You know, mm. uh, I don't think anybody else is doing that at this current point in time. So. No, but it's really smart because if that, if that can power your other pedals and you haven't got to take stuff for that, that's, that's, that's fantastic. Or even just charge your phone up, you know? Yeah. Even that, how, even how that often is our, how often do oh, I forgot to charge my phone at night. We all, yeah. you know, we all live and die on our phones these days. And so, you know, it's, uh, just having that ability to do that. Yeah. Know, goes goes I, far. I, I even said the other day, um, in the car, like the, the, the JBL's in the back, so we can always plug the iPad into it if we park somewhere and charge it up without running the battery of the car. You know, just, just loads of little things that you don't have to use, like you said, but you can do. But the great yeah. thing is on the back, you've just got your treble bass mids, so you can just lean over and just turn them like you can anything else. Or you can go into the app if you want to. I, you know, I still think, I mean, obviously the compact, you must have sold millions of compacts because they are so small and light and powerful. And for a lot of performers, that's what they want. The PRX1 is obviously a whole new thing, and then this kind of sits in the middle. So I do think this might be a little bit more niche, but I think it's great you've got those different things there. I was just thinking someone could even just buy two compacts if they want to take two things and have two speakers. There's many different ways you can do this, but the way they all link up into the same app and you can control them all from the same app is really cool. Yeah, um, that's the fundamental difference that I don't think a lot of people are doing. And And mm -hmm. I mean, even we made the mistake uh, on, on previous generation of products of having an app for each line. You know, we have like Eon Connect and PRX Connect. And yeah. even right now we have JBL Compact Connect. And, and having all these apps, yeah. again, it goes back to that that one experience, right? If you have three different apps for three different product lines, then that means that you as an end user have to learn how to use three different apps. Yeah. And yeah. frankly speaking, I don't want to do that. Yeah. And, and even from a product development standpoint, speaking selfishly, I don't want to have to memorize the intricate features of three different apps so that when people, uh, you know, like you have, have complex questions, I don't have to boot up the app and refresh my memory on how it functions. And so yeah. being able to just master one thing and only worry about one thing, that, that's huge. It, it, it's it, huge. But even, but even financially for, for the company, like you haven't got to have, make three apps. You just have one for everything. Must be yeah. must be fi fi better financially as well, surely, and and you can keep it up to date more and everything. Else. It's, everything's better, isn't it, with just one app? It just makes a lot it, of sense. It's much more complex from a development perspective because you have to you're chasing you know multiple moving targets. You know, and our goal is not just to have Eon One and PRX One in this ecosystem. We'd like to have every next generation JBL speaker that's a PA speaker function in this same app together wow. cohesively as one you know, powerful, uh, battle station, if you will. So if you've got a whole gig set up, uh, or you, you know, your bar is all wired with next gen JBL stuff, then the, the bartender can just control it from the, from, uh. the, from the app. And so if, you know, if the band wants to keep turning up even the bartender can very easily turn down mute, whatever, you know, like yeah. you, you giving that control to somebody, uh, is huge. And I think just making everything work together, you yeah. know, that's the the world that we live in right now is that, that things just need to work together. I mean, you know, you'll, you'll have your fridge be able to talk to your phone and order freaking groceries for you <laughs> if you're low. And so, you know, that's the world we live in. And frankly speaking, uh, you know, I was once a uh, gigging musician doing this all the time. And the last thing that I would want to do is have to learn three different apps for three different products. Are you that's saying that the Samsung fridge will control the PRX one at some point? 
uh, you know, Samsung <laughs> is our parent company. So at, at the end of the day, we're going to work to figure out how we can get the fridge to tell somebody, uh, you know, to turn on the PRX one because you're coming home, you know, whatever we got to do. But it is that kind of connected technology, that that connected experience that really drove yeah. forward with these I mean, products. It's really it makes a lot of sense. I've actually heard from some other companies that they're thinking in a similar kind of way now. It just And it makes complete sense. Because why would you have multiple different apps when you're one company? It doesn't make any sense at all. It's so it's I've a definitely... nightmare for every it's a nightmare yeah. for everybody involved. It's yeah. a nightmare for yeah. the product developer. It's a nightmare yeah. for the, the, the fellows and, and ladies that are coding and testing. Yeah. And it's a nightmare for you. And really, that's the that's the goal at the end of the day yeah. for me is not yeah. to make things easier on me. I'll function just fine if things are difficult. Yeah. But if things are difficult for you yeah. or if things are difficult for the folks in the chat, then you're not going to buy my stuff. Yeah. And, and really, at the end of the day, obviously, my goal is to sell stuff. But most important, <laughs> the thing that I want to do is make cool stuff for you guys. I want to make cool stuff. That's it. Well, I, I mentioned last time, like if you could make just a mixer, a, tw a tw an 18 channel mixer, use the same app and the same process. I would love that because I, I don't do band gigs very often. And if I have a different manufacturer's product, I find myself having to relearn the interface. They, they used to really trip me up. If I can just pull out the mixer and it's the same one again, I got no problem. It's exactly the same. Right? Yeah. And, and right. that's that's the goal. You know, one thing that, that we do have a benefit here at Harman, uh, which is the company that owns the JBL brand, is that we also own brands like Soundcraft and AKG. And yeah. we, the ability, you know, when I'm designing a mixer to be able to take it to the guy that makes the Soundcraft UI 24s and the expressions and all those big mixers and say, hey, how can we make these get along? Yeah. You know, goes yeah. far. We've got to be great. But we got some questions, so I don't I don't want to ignore the chat. We're, I'm going to address your your questions real soon. Just one thing, first of all, I want to just mention the app quickly because I noticed there's been a firmware update and a software update for the app. Where are you at with the app right now, and 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 how can people get it and update their devices? So uh, obviously, when you're developing an app, you're 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 constantly developing, right? That's the thing about apps is you're constantly working, you're constantly improving. And learning uh, and a lot of the the fact of the matter is is most of the best feedback comes when you release the product into the wild and people you know like the folks in the chat can say hey brandon i love that a b and c works but you got to improve d e and f hmm. well the one thing i can tell you guys is this is a strategic initiative for us and we're not going to stop on this app until we're all happy with it and when you first release something it's never perfect you know it's software software is never perfect so we're, we're continually developing uh, the most recent update that we did uh, coincided with the launch of the Eon One Mark II. Uh, it basically, the app update was some bug fixes, some firmware optimization stuff, and the integration of the Eon One Mark II into the ecosystem. Uh, really, we had to push out an app update to be able to now use that product in the same ecosystem. Hmm. Um, and then we did a firmware update for the PRX1, which addressed about eight open bugs, some of them related to channel EQ and how that operated things like that, just optimization stuff, especially from the app side. And we're going to be constantly doing that. Uh, I mean, obviously, we're not going to be releasing an app update or a firmware update every week. That's cumbersome on you guys, and that's cumbersome on our development teams. And so these might be six to eight week intervals be between firmware updates and things like that. But we've got a constantly running list of things that we want to fix or improve. And that's the whole point of doing an app and a digital side is that as the feedback comes in from the field, and we see people saying, hey, we hate this or we love this. We can make sure we don't break that, that you know, the things that you love in development. And we can make sure that we improve the things that you don't. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's the real goal. So when we did that, that last firmware update, we also did a firmware update on the L1 Mark II. Obviously, that product shipped with a set of firmware. Uh, but it's been on the water for 70 days now. So that firmware, we've already improved a lot of the battery detect logic. Uh, hmm. a lot of the things like that on the UI UX and, and things. And so that's what the, there's a firmware update for the Eon One Mark II as well. And that's really what it is. This is all optimization and bug fixes. We fixed about eight bugs on the PRX one and optimized a bunch of stuff. So really, you know, there's always, the software is always going to have bugs, but the goal here for us is to constantly improve that to the point where, you know, by the end of the year, we're not working on something that's buggy. We're working on something that's defined and refreshed and polished. And, and that's the, the process that takes time and more than anything takes user feedback and, and putting the product into the hands of the people that are going to use it so that you guys can inevitably break it 
and tell us how to fix it. No, <laughs> not necessarily how to fix it, but tell us what's broken. You know? Yeah, like I said Go last back. time, send, send, when, when those, I plan to make a video when those releases come out. So send me the update list and I'll put it into a video. And we yeah, can, I, I've got know, the update list. I just need to distill it down into get rid of some of the, the fluff that doesn't matter and just really yeah. say this is what the issue was this is what was fixed and then i can get that yeah. out to you and yeah. uh you can certainly share but you know just keep in mind that this is a this is a living breathing thing and mm -hmm. uh you know think about it as like a child you know when a child is born they don't they don't come out of the womb automatically knowing how to eat solid food you know mm -hmm. so we're going to have some growing pains. It's going to be normal for any kind of software development, uh, especially something that's this massive and kind of revolutionary for what it's capable of. And so my only uh, request to, to, to you folks out there is let, let's be patient. We're going to keep working at it. And if you find stuff that you like or you hate, there's plenty of ways to get in contact with us. Uh, my tech support team um, feeds back everything for me. My goal, I have a global tech support team. They're available all the time. You can reach out to them and they always feed back up to me. So I always know what's going on. I look at YouTube comments. I look at the forums. I do everything I can, uh, to make sure that I'm putting out the best product for you guys as possible. Cause that's really my goal at the end of the day. Yeah. Now, like I said, there's, there's, there's always that worry with customers that some, I've, I've, got, I've got some products in my, in my closet there that are just waiting for firmware updates that never came. But I see you, I see you've released one already for the product. So that's, that's great. That's great. It's encouraging. Yep. Yep. So and they, you know, stuff. the big thing too, like you, like we've talked about before in a previous Q and A, but if for whatever reason the app doesn't work, you have mm. all the control from the hardware. Yep. Yeah. Nothing is limited. It's you're, you're never you're, you're never up a creek without a paddle, if you will. You, you always have a, a fail safe option. Um, and I know that that's not the best way to go about business right now, but software can be tricky. You know, even yeah. the you know, you got to look at even the biggest builders of software in our industry, you know, have issues. I mean, Apple just had an issue a few releases ago <laughs> where their phones wouldn't connect to Bluetooth anymore, you know, yeah. and it, it's like. I've been thinking Sometimes that lately. It, yeah. If if they have supply issues with chips, and if they are releasing firmware that's not fully baked now, it's like, well, yeah, okay. I mean, I'm not I'm not saying I agree with that, but that is yeah. kind of where we're at. But no, I I don't mind as long as I just see those updates coming and and the people listening. And you do because you've been answering the questions on my video. Yeah, I'll, which is I'll great. never yeah. I'll never leave you guys hanging. And yeah. you know, yeah, that's great. If if we can take any solace in regards to software, like the one of the biggest software platforms on the planet just went down for five hours a few days ago and everybody lost their mind. So yeah. it's like software yeah. is tricky. Uh, and we're in a software mode right now. So it's mm. just it's one of those things. Let's like mm. we're going to keep building it. We're going to keep developing it. This is not something that we're going to uh forget about anytime soon this is a strategic mm -hmm. initiative for us to combine all these ppa products the portable pa products into one app um from a firmware perspective and a software perspective i'm not going to forget about it and um you know yeah. that's the, no it's the good that's that good and correct. just to be clear as far as i'm aware there, there are no like um deal breaker bugs right there right we're just talking about small interface things right there's no yeah. there's no Any actual problem that, yeah, yeah. No, no major problems. Really, yeah. any bug that you experience on an app side can almost always be fixed uh, mm -hmm. by just disconnecting from the app and then forgetting from your paired devices and then re-establishing re your Bluetooth connection. Right. Uh, that can fix about 90% of the issues that you're going to have. There are some issues with uh, fader jitter and things like that, and that's just going to come in with optimization. My recommendation is is just uh, when you're operating the application in the unit, just be very deliberate with your your moves. And the, the app really likes to make your adjustments when you remove your finger. So if you're very deliberate and then remove your finger where you want it, it'll jump minimally. Uh, and and again, this is something I'm fixing. I know the root cause. I just need mm -hmm. time. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. And that can happen with a lot of apps too. And sometimes I'll just reach over and just use the controls. So I'm glad they're there. Easiest right, way is right there on the hardware. Yeah, yeah. I want to um, go to the chat and ask any que op you know, open questions. Uh, okay. We've got some here anyway I want to talk about. Lewis did say the pricing is competitive. I agree. The price is good, I think, um, for what you're getting there. It's cool. For the feature set, I would agree. It's, it's, yeah. We really wanted to make sure that we were offering the most competitive feature set we could at that price point. So Yeah, yeah. Yeah, don't, don't, don't forget you're getting that that mixer built in, the battery power built in, and all that as well. 
Um, he said, am I using Ecamm Live to stream? Yes, I am, Lewis. And Peter Gregg, okay. So Peter Gregg is a photographer. He's got a YouTube channel, really good YouTube channel. He's now recording his Christmas album. He likes to sing. Um, so he's saying, what kind of fullness would a live singing be like? I'm not quite sure what he means. Yeah, I'm not sure I understand the, the question really, but just talking about this speaker from like a tuning perspective and what it offers in that regard, um, I, I personally prefer a very neutral sounding speaker. Um, I don't like to use a lot of DSP to get there. I like mm. to let my speakers breathe. And so on this speaker, one, one thing you'll notice from a tuning perspective is as you tune, as you turn up the speaker, you're not going to start to hear artificial artifacts in the low frequencies or, or peaks and valleys in the highs. It's going to be a very neutral, very even response as you turn up the very low power compression, uh, which is often attributed to something that people call clipping. But generally speaking, it's when the speaker's trying to push more air than it's capable of. And, um, I really, that comes about a lot because of DSP and what you put behind the curtain to, to make your speaker sound good. We really didn't do that on this or the PRX one. We really wanted to drive forward with a, a sound that allows the transducers to do the work instead of allowing DSP to do the work. And that's mm -hmm. really the best way to build a speaker. So from a tuning perspective, we've engineered something that's very, very neutral, very flat. So mm -hmm. as you're, uh, as you're playing live singing or something, you're going to, you're really going to hear sound that's true to what you're putting into it so it's not going to give yes. you something artifi artificial on the back yeah. end so obviously the mic the mic is important peter and it does have phantom power so it will power a condenser mic right two and channels of phantom power yeah two channels and also you've got presets in there so you can choose like vocal mic preset and then you can adjust it if you want to so, yep. And I'm not saying the presets are perfect for everybody. They might be good for some and bad for others, but really right. what they do is they give you a starting point to say, okay, this is what they changed for this. Right. So then maybe I can make some changes here and there um, to better suit my application. Yeah. Well, he's, he's a professional photographer. I'm sure he doesn't use the presets in his uh, cameras either. <laughs> so it's the same thing. Hey, like just those, cameras, the, those cameras are so complicated. If you could figure out a camera, you could figure out a neon one mark too. I promise you that. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm the same. I like to start with the mic for my voice. I know he does too. So I would start with the vocal mic and then plug in and then just tweak it if I need to. Um, uh, he said, are they designed to stack locking into each other when in transportation if you have two of them? Uh, as I understand the question, he's attempting to put them together while they're already locked and uh, they're not designed to lock in that fashion. We have inverted the male and female connection points of the battery so that there's more stability um, when they're connected, right? Instead of having it like that, the, the inversion point is a lot bigger. So it, it really increases the stability, but they're not designed to lock. Uh, they don't lock. Um, uh, and really, from my perspective, they will lock into the back of the unit, Aaron. Obviously, we already talked about that, but the units don't lock together. They're just designed with uh, more mechanical based philosophies about how the physics of the speaker is going to work and where the gravitational pull and the center of gravity is and things of that nature. Hmm. And Mike said, which beach was it? Venice Beach? There's a whole plethora of beaches. <laughs> the, 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 the one particular beach where, where we uh, had this happen um was actually huntington beach i believe uh which is oil infested currently so mm. yeah <laughs> lewis said i think one is plenty like i agree again to be clear i don't think you i mean i'm not saying you don't need two of these you might want five of these it's really hard for me when i review something you know people say how loud is it that's like saying how long is a piece of string i'm not being funny it's, it's really difficult because i've used prx1 outside pretty much at full volume but outside feeling like a whole outside space that's just going out onto the water so the sound is just disappearing and there's like people everywhere and even the people behind me could hear me to me that's really impressive but to some people that's not loud enough they want to think well i've got even more to go than that and then maybe they should get two at that point and you know there's so many factors that that affect these things right but yeah, yeah. I, I i think i think um 
like for me, one of these is yeah. fine. Like I wouldn't see a situation where I'd need to take two of these because you know. But but, but yeah. some people will. Some people will. But you know. The one thing I will say is is loud, as you just said, is very subjective. Uh, yeah. But the me the measurement data that I put out publicly mm. is continuous. SPL. It's not a burst SPL which are, or a peak SPL. A lot of people will put out a peak SPL that just is one frequency at that volume. Right, right. right, right. My numbers are continuous. They run at that. So if I say that something's running at 119 dB, it's giving you 119 dB. Mm. So at that point in time, you can you make the decision on, on what's loud enough. Yeah. So, you know, again, is it loud enough? That's a subjective question. Is 130 dB going to fill your audience of 500 people? Yeah, it probably will. And I want to mention, like, when I first got these, I had to think, rethink how I think about stuff because I'm so used to, like, mic and line inputs and things like that. With these, um, someone someone's asked me on one of my videos about this as well. The way I'm running them, and tell me if you agree with this, Brandon, lately I'm just running the master wide open and then use it to plug in the, the, the mic or the guitar in or whatever it is and just turning it up until I've got enough volume basically and just making sure it's not going into the red because in the in the instructions it says to run it um, like like yellow is healthy green yeah. is not healthy enough so there's a few things here to bear in mind when you're setting it up it's a bit different to like a conventional PA system and generally speaking that is how I, I run it as well um, and and also Keep in mind that the LEDs are, are designed to indicate signal, but we haven't perfected them yet. So we're still mm -hmm. able to per, you know, push out some of the updates on that side. From my perspective, if it's in the red and you're not hearing a clip, you're not clipping. So okay. clip is going to be audible. You'll, you'll hear clip, right? Mm -hmm. If it tells you, if it's red and you're, it's, it's just probably in an optimization state. But generally speaking, when I run my PRX1, I will turn up to like negative five on the master. So basically 95%. Uh, mm -hmm. and if, and then I'll turn my, my channel mixer up where I want it to be and get it so that the channel mix are sounding good. And the only reason I leave that negative five is so that I have like five DB of headroom just in case I need an extra little thump, right. Or an extra little push on mm -hmm. the speaker. Mm -hmm. When you're running the master at full tilt, it's fine. It's not a bad thing. And a lot of people do operate the speaker in that fashion, but I like to have just a little bit extra so I can turn it up to 11 if I need to, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But there's no, there's no like button to press for like mic or line. It kind of switches. You can hear it switching itself, right? It does it for you. Yeah. So that's why I do it that switch. way. Yep. It automatically switches for you there. there and, and to be able to put 56 full DB of preamp gain in here, there's like four different op amp stages. So you, you, you mm. will hear a little when it switches, but it's not damaging to your speaker. Um, mm. And really it only happens because the power is just switching, right? And it's giving you that more yeah. gain that you're going to need because some microphones on the mic on the, uh, on the market need 50 dB or 48 dB of gain mm. just to really drive them. Even some guitars need more gain, but yeah. yeah, it's, it's, it's a little bit of a different operation. And we did that deliberately because a lot of people don't know when they need to be in mic mode or line mode. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's not clear. It's not like yeah. every microphone needs to be in mic mode and every right. other thing needs to be in right. line. So I agree. I agree. I prefer it, just, but it took me a little while to get into that headspace. So I just want to make, make yeah. people aware of that because I'm, I'm coming from an old school background of setting my gain, setting mic or line. I prefer this. That's why I like that. Turn, I just Like I said, I turn the master to the maximum. I plug in whatever it is. I turn it up. With acoustic guitar yeah. pickups, some um, like I love the anthem. But it has pretty, like eight dB less gain than most other pickups. So, you know, for that, there's there's so many different things, and you haven't got to think about that. You just keep turning up until it's loud enough. Turn it up until it's loud enough. That's yeah. the that's yeah. the motto, man. Turn yeah. it up until it's as loud as you want it to be, and then you're good yeah. to go. Yeah, I like that. Mike Hunt says I'd like to see this in real world application. Well, I can say, Mike, I have I like I said, I use PRX One outside at this country club. It worked great. And I have taken the, the new one, the Eon 2 outside, and used it there as well. I've got no, no problems with that. I notice it is, I do notice the volume increase when I plug it in. But for me, I just see that as a bonus. And uh, it's plenty loud enough without plugging it in as well. Again, it's all subjective, but these are things I look for. Can you just tell me what, what are the actual numbers between Compact, Eon 2, and, and PRX? What's the actual DB that you're rating them at? So, so the, compact me the compact will measure at 112, uh, continuous, 112 dB. Um, the Yamaha Mark II is 119 on battery or 123 on AC power. So it's about 7 dB louder 
battery to battery. Mm. Uh, and then on AC, you're, you know, you're talking 11 dB. And then the PRX1 is obviously uh, really our pro grade product. And from a uh, SPL perspective, that one measures at 130. Yeah. How does the throw differ? You mentioned throw earlier. Like, how does that differ between the different products? So the you're going to get about 10 degrees more uh, horizontal dispersion on the Eon 1 Mark II than you will on the PRX. The PRX mm. is really designed to throw distance and not throw width. Okay. Um, and then the Eon 1 Compact, my, if memory serves correct, I think was like 95 versus the Eon 1 Mark II is like 140. So there's a very pronounced difference. Mm. The, the Eon 1 Compact is going to be much more by way of directional. Um, uh, so more of a point source speaker mm. versus the wide ranging speaker. And really the L1 Mark II, we've measured pretty good frequency response outside of that 140. Um, but 140 is where our acoustic team really feels comfortable saying that it performs its best, so. Yeah. Uh, Mike Hunt said, someone get me a JBL shirt. Yes, please. I'll work on that. <laughs> Peter Gregg says, can I drill down with some more operational questions? Yes, you can. You, ask them you now. You sure can, Peter. Ask them ask now. Them, yeah. Ask them now while we, while we can. I love, I, love, I love having the creator of the products here. We can just ask them these things. So, yeah, do it while we can. Um, Indigo S, interesting story. I pre-ordered my PRX1, expected it November 2, weeks later. Oh, sorry. Expected it November 2, weeks later it shipped. So you have it already, right, Indigo? That's, that's cool. called the full that's called the full titan right there that's when you i love when something says it's going to be back ordered forever and then you get it early that actually just happened with the flooring that i installed in my new house <laughs> and that's rare now i mean I, i'm yeah. just i you know i sometimes i just go on sweep order for fun and just look around at products like i was on there the other week prs guitars not a single prs guitar on sweet water can you believe it wood it's shortage just, hmm? it's a wood shortage yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's impacting furniture yeah. and you name it. Yeah, everything is is short right now. It's, <laughs> it's crazy. It's, it's a ridiculous world we live in. So yes. you know, Indigo, I, I don't want to I don't want to say anything out of space here. But if you got one before you expected it, great on you, man. Congratulations. Yeah. yeah. All right, Patsy Smith says I've I've been asked this by someone else, and this is something I've been thinking about too. Does the Mark II come with a, a decent cover? So. It doesn't ship with a cover. I, I want to bring this up. I notice I, I really I really like the bags, the um, cases site, and they have a really cool um, case for the PRX one. But you have to get the thing that has the wheels on the bottom. I wish they. I've already told you this off camera, but I wish they would sell a version that's just the cover, just the slip cover. Yeah. I've uh, I've talked to my my product manager that does the bag side of things. Told him that that's a request from the field. So I, mm. the good thing is, is the tooling is already created. It should just be an easy. Let's just yeah. pull yeah. pull the top cover. Yeah. To answer uh, Patsy's question, it does not come with the cover. Um, the one thing I would say uh, in product development that I've learned is that anything that you're including is gonna is gonna come at a cost, right? Yeah. And so uh, a, a, a decent cover for that, generally speaking, is gonna mean okay, where do I where do I pull money from another spot, right? right? And and, right. and if I'm gonna include the cover for you know, not everybody's gonna want a cover. Yeah. Right. And so yeah. if I'm if I'm including a cover, then I now have to decide where I don't want to spend that money on a development side. And from my perspective, I'd rather spend it on a more durable cabinet. I'd rather spend right. it on. And, and as funny as this sounds, I'd rather spend it on better packaging so that the unit makes it to you through four different couriers intact. And Aaron, you, you, we already know that that's a challenge just based <laughs> on our, our relationship here. So yes. it really comes down to anywhere you spend money in the development process, it, you're taking money away from another thing that you can spend right. money on. I, I get that. I get that. As, as someone that's doing gigs, my first thought is, where's the cover? But to someone getting it for their yoga studio, they're not going to really care about the cover and they'd rather, yeah. they'd rather the price was cheaper. But I, I, you know, I just hope that they offer that because, like, especially for this one, the way it all goes into the one thing. If I can just slip a nice cover over that and take it to the gig, that's going to be really. I mean, I don't, I don't want I, I, the wheels thing is cool, but obviously that adds to the price as well, right? So I don't want to buy the one with the wheels and not use the wheels either. So I hope, I hope they do that soon, and, and also for this new one as well. I think it'd be for me yeah, that'd be great. I, I... I let them know. Um, so I think that you should probably see that within just a few couple short weeks. It's it sh should be an yeah. easy fix. Yeah, I think I think a lot of people will want that. And then you know, people that are taking it out on the beach every week will want the protection for, for sure. So I think that's it. That's an important thing I for agree. me. 
Um, Mike says a speaker design question. Have you con have you considered ribbon speakers? From my perspective, uh, ribbon speakers offer a very, very pronounced challenge um, in regards to portable PA speakers, right? And ribbons are, are uh, fragile. You know, mm, I've spent yeah. a lot of time in a previous life with the, the folks over at Royer who make, they specialize in ribbons and very delicate, you know, yeah. they're delicate. And when you're moving something around frequently, um, and let's be honest, we're gigging musicians, we're throwing things around in some instances, and we're not necessarily treating them with the care that you need from a ribbon perspective. Mm -hmm. They present uh, durability and quality issues in a portable PA setting. Ribbons would be great. And, and the, the, the most common place that you see them is like studio monitors, because those are set it and forget it. You don't move those. You just set them there and you let it go. Right. Mm -hmm. But from a portable PA perspective, it's just not practical. It's, it's mm -hmm. tough to make a ribbon durable enough to withstand any of the challenges that we as gigging musicians are going to throw at it. And really that's the key. It's the durability side. It pre presents yeah. reliability issues and ribbons sound great, but they're just not a portable PA type application. It is, it's really important to me that when I show up to the gig, the thing works. That's, that's priority one, right? Yeah. Can you, imagine, priority two, can you imagine? Priority two is, does it sound good? <laughs> priority one is, does it work? It's got to, it's got to work every time. And, um, you know, when I, when I, I do think... drive, I always take the compact in the back of the car. So sometimes I'm not even using it, but it's always in the car because I know that if the worst thing happens, I can just plug a guitar straight into it. It's charged up and I can just play. I can just play guitar. I can do the something. Thing is, I do the same, but even if I'm like going to my family's for a pool party, you know, cause I never yeah. know what kind of, what kind of bad sound they're going to be playing and obviously sounds important to me. So I have my compact with me nearly everywhere I go. My yeah. wife makes fun of me, but it, it, it's like part of the travel pack. Do we have the compact? It's got to go mm. with us. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I know people are going to ask me, so I'll just ask you now, is there any news on when that will be integrated into the app? It's just a resource perspective right now. And like I said, I, I, you know, I've launched now two major products in 60 days and, mm. um, you know, f without saying too much more, I got more coming. So mm. I really, my, my engineers are all focused on making sure that we can build the best new products that we can. And right now right. we're targeting like the first quarter of next year to be able to get the compact integrated. Okay. Okay. That's fine. Um, I just know people be that's that's been so popular. Like that thing has been. Yeah. Do, do you know? Do you know how many of those you've sold? It must be like so many. Yeah, just, worldwide, it, it's a, we've sold a, a lot. Right now, we're in a back order state due to already chip, chip shortages and st stuff like that. But mm. yeah, we, we uh, for the most part, we couldn't keep that thing on the shelves. You yeah, know? yeah. I just I just know they'll ask, that, that I know they'll ask me that in the future, and I know they'll ask me when you're going to remove that noise as well. The, 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 the ding. <laughs> yeah, I've removed it entirely on all the you new have, speakers and I love it. And I, I'm so yeah, grateful. I've, <laughs> I promise you, I promise you all the very first update I'll do to the compact once we get it into that uh, new Pro Connect ecosystem is getting rid of any Bluetooth connection tones. Yeah, yeah we don't I, want them. We don't need them. Uh, so yeah. we'll, we'll get rid of them. I, uh, they're, they're certainly an annoyance for uh, for you. And like I said, the, the moment that I decided it was time to remove them was when I had my PRX1 plugged in at full tilt <laughs> in my room and it my Bluetooth connection tone woke up and then about five seconds later, I heard my baby screaming from a nap and I was like, <laughs> Nope, this is, oh, this is it. That's it. He woke my child up from a nap. You're done. Yeah. It was never actually a problem for me, but I always, yeah, I, I think like a performer, right? So I always, I always think ahead. I'm like, I'll get called for a gig and it'll be a wedding ceremony and I'll sneak in late and I'll put it down and turn it on and they'll be getting ready to say their vows. Do, 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 do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So never uh, actually yeah. happened, but it's always just in the back of my mind. So that's, that's gone yeah. now. And that'll be gone. I promise you we're getting rid of that. And, and like, yeah. literally I can't stress this enough when people say, Hey, we, I'd love to see this. I'd love to see that. That's yeah. the best way that I can make a product that suits your needs is yeah. hearing you say, I love this. I want that. I don't want that. And yeah. I, I can optimize and, and run from there. So yeah. keep, keep the feedback coming. Yeah. Uh, if I don't respond immediately, ju I, I just know that I look at everything. I've probably yeah. seen it, even if I didn't respond. If I responded, it just meant that I had the time at that point in time to, to do it. So, right. Well, um, that's that's where I want to wrap up because we've we've answered the questions. 
If you're watching this in the future and you've got some questions, just put them down here in the comment section and either myself or Brandon will uh, reply, we can. And, uh, and then we'll also plan to do one of these again in the future. So if you subscribe to my channel, ring the bell and turn on notifications, when we do these, it'll pop up and tell you that we're, we're live and you can come and ask the questions in real time. So now Brandon, thanks for doing these. I think these are so valuable and it's, it's no so interesting and it's so helpful that you're available and willing to do these. I think it's just great for the whole community that you're, you're, you're making there. It's great. And, and you know, the, the main thing that I would say is if I'm a musician and gigging musician at that at heart, you know, probably played over 500 gigs in my days. And even though if I'm not doing it right now, that that's still the community I grew up in and lived in for forever. And so, mm. you know, people using these products are the people that I try to build them for and keep, keep the comments and questions coming. It's, I love talking about gear. I could do it till I'm blue in the face. So, mm. No, it's really great. So congratulations and uh, everyone. Yes, this is the Eon One Mark II. Really great option if you want something that's that can be battery powered and a bit more power than the Compact. And the PRX One is shipping also and it's been updated. So make sure you install your firmware updates and software updates when you get them. All right, I'll say thanks to Brandon. Thanks to everyone in the chat for your questions. Thanks for watching. And um, yeah, Brandon, have a great day and I'll look forward to seeing you next Thanks, time. Sir. Yep. Happy Thank Friday, you. man. Enjoy your weekend. Yep. Yeah, See you again. too. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.